Amazing how much luggage there is for so few passengers. And I'd guess that three quarters of it belongs to the women. Who could she be? An actress? A million? She's certainly attracting a lot of attention. Constable Oliver seems to be a little simplistic, but I don't think he's a bad policeman. The way he reacted in the tunnel and got the train moving, hats off. Hello, Constable Olivier. It's Oliver. I just wanted to say that you did a good job in the tunnel. Hmm, thanks. How did you know how to get the train moving? I come from a family of miners, and my uncle is an engine driver down the mine. I see. And you looked over his shoulder? Yeah. Best way to learn. Did Legrand tell you about his theory? That it could be the real Raven? Of course he did. We're partners. But the modus operandi doesn't fit at all. The Raven wasn't a bomber. We have the letter. And the feather. That's his symbol. Anyone can put a feather in an envelope. You would know. What's that supposed to mean? It was you. What was me? You put the envelope on the safe. To blow myself up? You threw the bomb away, and now you're the famous hero, right? And the Raven must have paid you pretty well. That is ridiculous. Is it? Only you and I and Legrand were in the freight car. One of us must have put the envelope on the safe. Legrand didn't, and I didn't think about it. The sea is quiet today. Ideal conditions for a cruise. In my younger years, I might have considered abseiling from the crane down to the ship. But those days are long past. I'll be marching up this gangway today, no matter what. Someone has to stop that damn bomber before he endangers more people. I don't want to run into Legrand before I have something new to report, otherwise he'll send me back to shore. I'll take an inconspicuous look up close. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't expecting anyone to be crawling around on the ground in front of my door. Don't worry about it, miss. No harm done. Oh, that's good to hear, Mr... Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. May I ask your name? Patricia Mayers. Are you American? I am. Um, could you help me, please? Uh, certainly. Are you on your way to Egypt? Yes. Are you on holiday? My father works for a railroad company there. And is rebuilding the country after the war. Wonderful. Yes, wonderful. One more. You're lucky to have a father who takes you to so many interesting places. Oh, yes. Lucky me. Aren't you interested in Egypt? The pyramids? The history? 
I would have been more interested in a father who doesn't travel 300 days a year. <laughs> I'm sure your father regrets that he can't always be with you. No doubt. And I'm sure he always wanted the best for me. But that doesn't stop him from thinking only about himself far too often. Bring my luggage on board, please. Excuse me? It was a pleasure meeting you, Constable Zellner. Impertinent. Hmm. Is the doctor afraid to board the ship? Hello, Dr. Gebhardt. Nah, the hero of the hour. The hero of the hour, but out of work soon. Oh, you won't be a policeman anymore? Yes, but on my old beat, which is almost as good as being out of work. <laughs> I understand. Is your new job bothering you? On the contrary. I wasn't sure whether I made the right decision until now. I'm from the Black Forest, you know. There are only mountains there, <laughs> no ships. But now, <sighs> the salty breeze, the atmosphere, I think I want to stay at sea forever. The sea is one thing, the passengers are another. <laughs> it will be okay. What do you know about the Baroness? Nothing, really. Did you talk to her in the tunnel? No. Her butler was looking after her, and I was busy with Miss Miller. As you can imagine, it was a shock for her to see her son rolling away on a burning train. That's understandable. So, we were all glad when we heard about your brave deed. Have you already met the captain? Mario Di Conti. Heard of him? Should I have? He is something of a star in Italy. A war hero. In the First World War, when he was a young man, he sank more enemy ships than anyone else. In the Second World War, well, he had some you know, personal problems. You mean, like the ones you buy in bottles and pillboxes? Hmm. Yeah, you could say that. Anyway. Sending him into combat was out of the question. They gave him a supply ship instead, and he became a hero again. His ship, part of a convoy from Palermo to North Africa, was the only one that made it, with an extra 100 seamen who he rescued from the other ships. Impressive. To say his health is rather shaky these days would be an understatement. I think most of my time on board will be spent dealing with his numerous ailments. Well, there's nothing left for me to do but to wish you a good trip. Oh, you are not coming with us? Unfortunately, no. I'm to go back to Zurich. What a pity. Take care, Dr. Gebhardt. Keep an eye on the other passengers. Oh. I just remembered, we found these in the tunnel. Are they yours? I'm afraid so. Strophantine, do you have heart problems? Hmm. Maybe it's for the best that you're not coming along. Too much excitement could be bad for your health. You mean, if I don't do anything, I'll probably have a few more years to live? That's right. Keep your chin up. Are you? Hello, Baroness. Ah, Inspector. Constable. Poppycock. You won't be a constable much longer. When they find out how you rescued that little boy, they'll have to promote you to Inspector. Very kind of you to say so, Baroness. I hope you survived the adventure in the tunnel unharmed. Scandalous. 
You book a first-class cabin, and then you're walking on the rails. <laughs> they wanted to bundle me off in a bus without my luggage. The circumstances, madam. I insisted on a limousine and didn't leave until all my luggage was recovered. Did you know that the real Eye of the Sphinx wasn't even on the train? I had no idea. Inspector Le Grand seems to prefer to keep me in the dark, although I'm the one paying for all of this. The Inspector is ensuring the safety of the Eye. Well, obviously. All the same, it was you who did the real work on the train. I hope that the remainder of your trip to Cairo will be less stressful. You aren't coming with us. I'm afraid Inspector Legrand doesn't want my company. Fiddle faddle! You found my purse while he just sat on some boxes, <laughs> guarding the bomb that nearly killed us all. I want you to come with us. I'd like that as well, but... I'll speak to the captain and bear the costs. Baroness, I don't know... No, no trouble. I'll see to it. Now, where's my damned butler? James, there you are. Is the inspector to carry my luggage onto the ship all by himself? Uh, well, actually... <gasps> Baroness? Baroness, can you hear me? She fainted. No! No! Baroness? Again, harder. Hello, can you hear me? I... Help me up. Uh, perhaps we should... Now... I'll get Dr. Gebhardt. No, 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 Doctor. Just a little moment of weakness. Your arm, James. Take me to the ship. But of course, madam. That was no moment of weakness? She saw something that shocked her, or someone. Very interesting, especially since she doesn't want to admit it. That's a fine automobile, but not even a stately sedan like this can handle all the Baroness's luck. She was lucky that the second and third freight cars weren't buried in the tunnel. Most of her things made it unscathed. Who or what did she see? Neither of them seems to have noticed what happened down here. <laughs> You'll have a tough time with her. How does one get aboard without a ticket? Hmm. Not brilliant, but it's a possibility. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to see the sights in Venice. Paperwork served up by my Italian colleagues took up most of the day. Oh, who do we have here? Signore... This is Constable Anton Zellner. Signore Zellner, I heard about your feats in the mountains. Welcome aboard the MS Lydia. Thank you, Captain. I didn't know you'd be taking part in the journey, but I'm glad to have you with us. I'll have a nice cabin prepared for you immediately. The Constable will not be joining us. He has other duties. Oh, that's too bad. I would have loved to hear about his adventures from the man himself. Good news! The Baroness invited me to come along. 
and, as a private citizen, I'm pleased to accept. A holiday on the high sea. Magnificent. Indeed. There's nothing finer. Unfortunately, the constable is needed in Switzerland. But, Inspector... There is an investigation into his obstruction of Interpol operations. I have a ticket, and I am... Not coming along as long as I'm on board. End of discussion. <sighs> I'd like to accept your offer, but unfortunately, higher powers prevent it. I am sorry to hear that. We are by no means full, and have plenty of room for one more passenger. The constable just wants to have a quick look around and then leave before we set sail. When will that be? Oh, in about uh, 15 minutes. There you have it, constable. May I ask how to get to the cargo hold? Oh, signori, there are much nicer places on board. But I'm interested in the cargo hold. Why is that? One of the trunks seems suspicious to me. Someone could be hidden in it. You? <laughs> you want to imply that the most brilliant and probably richest thief in all of Europe is stowing away in a trunk? That's not his style. That's what makes it more likely that it's not him, but a copycat who's behind all this. And a copycat's style might include doing whatever it takes. Like hiding in a trunk if they've lost the ticket. Oh, come now. Actually, it would be possible for a registered passenger to board the ship without a ticket. What do you mean? You can't buy a ticket for the Lydia at the counter. You book the trip in advance. We know the names of all the passengers. As long as a passenger is on the guest list, we let them board the ship. Doesn't matter if they have a ticket or not. And did any of the passengers board without a ticket? I couldn't say. We ask for a name and check it on the list. The tickets are no more than souvenirs for the passengers. So much for your trunk theory. Regardless of what you say, I would still like to examine the cargo hold. All right then, if you like. But we'll meet here again in 10 minutes. Captain De Conti, before we depart, I'd like to send two telegrams. Certainly, Inspector. The cargo hold is over there. You can enter through a door on the forecastle. The horn will sound twice, five minutes before we set off. That's the signal for all the dock workers to leave the ship. Understood, Captain. Follow me to the bridge. You can send your telegrams from there. My time is running out. If I don't find anything in the cargo hold, my cruise will be over before it even begins. Oh no. It's too dark in here. I can't see my hand in front of my face. Look. Oh, what's this? Aha. That's the young woman's cabriolet. Apparently, they absolutely had to take it to Egypt. At daddy's expense, of course. Hmm, the left three lockers are locked. The door to this locker is ajar. Empty. I wouldn't be able to see all of the cargo hold without the... F but even with the flashlight, it's...
Hello? Come on out. The game's up. I... I'm opening the trunk. Hello? I'm sure someone was in the trunk. Shards are... Phew. I startled too easily.